Luca Joe here. This is the first video for 2022. So happy new year to everybody. And this is a short video announcing that I've uploaded some player aids in relation to this game. This game is Napoleon at the Berezina. This is a game published in 2003 by Against the Odds magazine. This is volume number one, issue number four. And this game was designed by Rob Markham. This is a solitaire game where the player controls the French forces and the rules or artificial intelligence system controls the Russian forces. Now bear in mind that the AI in this game is more like guidelines that guide the player as to what to do with the Russian forces. So you have to uh, make judgment calls and decide what's the best course of action giving uh, given the uh, guidelines that you are given. And you see here the initial setup for the game. The orientation of the map, you see that north is this way. So we are facing east. And the French forces have to cross the Berezina River, which divides the map from north to south there. The Berezina River has some spaces that are fords, identified by the letter F there that are crossable. But of course, some of these fords uh, cross right into Russian positions as the ones that you see here. But this particular army is the army of the Danube, which half of it starts deployed on the map and it starts like frozen on the map. So the French have to take advantage of the Russian uh, slowness in waking up and try to move quickly their units and cross the Berezina and exit through one of these spaces that you see here that have this bugle symbol. There's various spaces as such. I've uh, placed these green pawns in spaces that also serve as Russian reinforcement entry spaces. The bulk of the units for both sides do not start on the map at the beginning of the game. They appear as reinforcements. And that's what one of the play rays that I made is about. But before we show you, this is the turn record track. The game has 25 turns. And you see the light blue turns. Those are day turns. The dark blue are night turns. And it indicates when do any of the sides receive reinforcements. This... Uh, uh, particular situation starts in November 25, so winter is setting in, and you see uh, by the color palette of the map, you see that the ground is uh, becoming uh, uh, a very cold uh, battlefield. Now the game includes, uh, in paragraph format, a uh, summary of when reinforcements enter, but it's just text and it's not very user friendly. So I decided to make these reinforcement cards. Here you see the French reinforcement card and it has uh, rectangles for each turn. So in turn three, you see that the French receive the old guard with Lefebvre, its commander and Napoleon. And it tells you where they enter, which is in hex 6005. And so forth, you see in turn six, seven, eight, nine, the reinforcement that the French uh, receive. In this game, unfortunately, you see that the unit's full strength side only has the morale, that letter that you see there, uh, which serves as the order in which units will fire. So A units will fire at enemy units before B units and so forth and will inflict losses before uh, other units fire back. So, and then you see also a number, which is the movement allowance. But you don't see, for instance, from which formation the unit is. This unit, the uh, player aid states that this is from the fourth core. Yojen is the leader. The information about the uh, formation to which the unit belongs is in the back of the counter. This is the reduced side. So that's one drawback that this game has, and that's another reason I wanted to make this player aid. So you can easily uh, discern here 
which formations enter in which turn. Then there's also these rabble counters. Many of the units will, will turn into rabble. And these are hopeless soldiers that are just trying to make their way across the river and they are easily destroyed by the Russians. The French also have some engineer units as shown here. These can uh, construct bridges as shown by that uh, B symbol on the top right hand corner. So that's the French reinforcement card. Because the Russians are controlled by the rules of the game, uh, a sort of an AI, they are, uh, there's more uh, uh, rules relating to how they enter the game. And you see here in turn three, the units of the army of the Danube enter the game, and these are the ones that don't start on the map at the beginning of the game. The ones that do start uh, is roughly half of the army of the Danube. But the Russians also have the units of Wittgenstein's army, and those are the ones that have the lighter green color scheme. And you see him see them here. The player aid has this space where you place those units. Uh, the entry of these units is variable, so you're going to start rolling. In turn 12, they enter with a 1. In turn 13, with a 1 or 2, and in turn 14 with a, with a 1 to 4. And once they enter, you roll here to see which of uh, their entry points they will be entering the game. So it's a cool thing about this game. You don't know when the units are going to enter, and they enter at different places. So that increases replayability. There's, there's also an independent Russian command, Yermalovs, and these are these pink units so you also uh, these units also enter in turn 14 and then there's the main russian army under kutuzov and you see them there with their uh, core commanders and those uh, may enter the game in turn 15 and you start rolling and the avant guard will enter at some place and here is uh, the possible hexes and then the rest of the army enters on the following turn after the Avant Guard enters. So this is a 25 turn game and the Russians will enter in force by turn 15. So the French have to move fast and they are battling not only the Russians that can react to them but also the weather conditions. Uh, not all units will be able to move at full at their full movement allowance. You see that their movement allowance is the number to the right there. Five for infantry, eight for cavalry, but that is if a unit is within the command range of its leader. And so this is a game that really interests me because it's about a topic that I haven't seen. This is a retreat game where you're trying to salvage as much of your army as you can. So those are the reinforcement cards that will be available at BGG and I also made sequence of play cards for this game so those are, will also be available at BGG and there's eight of them starting first with a check for reinforcements. This card has a summary as to the particular turns when reinforcements will enter the game or may enter the game. So you see there the information, and you also refer to the uh, reinforcement cards that we just saw. Then the first phase of the game is the morale effects phase, which is skipped in turn one, and during the first turn of any newly arriving reinforcing units. And here are the steps that you have to conduct. And you have to roll on the French morale effects table, and Napoleon's army is going to start to disintegrate because rolling on that table will cause units to, uh, to become rabble. And uh, so this is a game where you're going to see your army starting to disintegrate and you have to save as much of the army as you can. Then comes the French movement phase. And you see there, there's a penalty of minus two for units that are not 
within uh, command control of their core leader or Napoleon. There's also, uh, uh, you have to roll on the forward crossing table with uh, nefarious effects in some cases. So crossing a ford in the middle of the Russian winter is not uh, the most safe thing in the world. Then you have the first joint combat phase. And here is the first of two combat phases in the turn. And players uh, may conduct combat. Artillery can fire at targets up to three hexes away. And uh, stacks containing only cavalry or horse artillery can uh, retreat one hex and avoid combat. So next is the Russian movement phase. And you, you, you move the Russians according to the rules in the game. There are specific rules as to uh, what kind of uh, French units they will be approaching. And... Uh, this is summarized here, and also those rules are found in the rule book. And then comes the second joint combat phase after the Russians move. Again, you resolve combat. So that's phase number five. Then we go to phase number six, which is the engineering phase. And this is when the French engineers can construct or repair pontoon bridges. As units cross these pontoon bridges, there's a heightened risk that they will collapse. So you have to repair them. And uh, you see here that as soon as the Russians reach combat rating B on their morale track, then and control both earthworks, hexes, uh, the bridges are gonna uh, be uh, destroyed also. So the bridges uh, are not meant to last too long. And finally, you have the bridge breakdown phase here. And you check each pontoon bridge. Use this turn by French combat units or rabble to see if it breaks down. So those are the phases of the game summarizing these sequence of play cards. I'm definitely going to play the game. Don't know if I'll make a video on the game, but it's a game that really interests me because of the topic. And I have not seen any other games on this particular topic. You know, they make games about offensives, but this is a game where you are retreating. Re a, re a purely uh, retreat game. The only other game I can think of is uh, the game made by Herman Lutman that uh, has to do with evacuating the uh, BEF from France in 1940. That's... Uh, another game where you're trying to salvage as much as you can. So it's an interesting situation. It's, this is an old game, and I wanted to make those player aids to make the game uh, easier and more enjoyable to play. So if you have the game, consider downloading them. I will place the link uh, to both items as soon as they are available at BGG. So that's the play raids for Napoleon at the Berezina. And this is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.